hate this place. Do you? I swear I do. Okay, come back when you like us. I was gonna help you, but your mouth just kept talking. Oh, come on, And come now on, you gotta bro. get walking. This is total bull Don't give me that look from the side of your eye. I know that look. Don't tell me what to do. Ah, uh, don't tell uh, me what to don't do Don't tell either. me what to do. After having only hired their new employee recently, Ashley managed to pick up on a few inconsistencies in the way she did things. Hey, Ashley, uh, you What's said that? you wanted to know if Tressa asked me to put anything else on the internet? Yeah. Well, she did. She did? Another watch. Fearing foul play, Ashley asked her guys to be on the lookout for any suspicious move that she might make. She asked me to put a watch on the internet. She didn't ask me, no. John came up to me. She didn't ask you? Just, no, John came up to me and said just to let you know that she's got this watch and she wants me to put it in. While they were busy discussing, it seems she managed to catch whatever was going on immediately. Tressa came over, hoping to vindicate herself. I didn't ask him to put it online yet. I didn't ask so him. So he wouldn't just offer it. Right. You said to come to one of you guys. Well, before I would have bought it, I would have came to you but guys. you already asked him to put it on the internet. No. This isn't making sense, but... You got cameras all over in here, check it. Despite her attempt to vindicate herself, Ashley seemed to have marked her out for termination, and there was nothing anybody could do to stop it. Trust it, you gotta go, you gotta go home the rest of the day, I'm sorry. And, and. All right, you just made that move. Don't You're done. Back. I tossed it in your hand. Just let it Fine, just watch her, get her out of here immediately. And that's how they managed to successfully get rid of Tressa. Now, through their very diabolical plan, of course, she wasn't going to go without throwing a few words of her own at two. I literally told everyone that you weren't as big of a bitch. I was wrong. Excuse me? Get the I, out of here. I, get out of here. I, I, get out! Speaking of new hires, in this episode, a man looking to secure a job at the American Jewelry and Loan came into the store and managed to meet with Ashley, who put him through the process. I need a job application. Okay. What position are you wanting? Uh, I'm trying to be security. Okay, let me get it for you. All right, thanks. You finished already? Yeah. Wow. So when can I start? Since they'd have to check his form and make their own inquiries about his background before they could even deign to let him into that very important position, it was odd that he thought he was going to start immediately. Someone told me to come in and fill out the app, and, you know, he said he got me. Who was it? Rich. Oh, you already talked to Rich? We're actually good friends. We hang out all the time. Yeah. What's going on, Rich? He hey. said you told him that you were going to hire him for security. When you want me to start? Hiring people isn't exactly under Rich's jurisdiction, so it's either this guy is lying or Rich might have grown too big for his britches and made some promises that he can't keep. Really, you have a clue what you're talking about. I'm saying, but you said come in here to fill out the application and you was going to give me a job, man. Now you're starting to piss me I'm off. Saying, this what is bull Man, you're supposed That's to get right. me in here. So let's make this real quick and simple. You're fired. If that really is Rich's friend, then it's pretty fortunate that Rich managed to get some damage control by refusing to acknowledge the fact that they might know each other. After all, what he just pulled could cost him his job. Tom coming up here. You know what? You're wasting my time, time making up these Why stories. Let me show you, you how security job? really works. Why would Felix, you leave somebody get him the out of here. That's security. Get nice out. working with you. Bro. While they were all having a rough day, as they had just caught the tail of one of their employees who'd been stealing some of their wares. They were trying to act as normal as possible till the police would arrive to take the thief away. He's available and make sure he doesn't run out of the store. I bought him in like what, like two months ago? All of a sudden it's just up now. Those pieces came off. So can you fix them or something for me? Let me see it. Some bull This irate customer thought this was the best time to just start something. His use of profanities managed to draw Ashley's attention. Unbelievable, man. Ashley. Yeah. And his nose pieces broke. You gonna break my own glasses though. Okay. Well. Can you just put a screw in there for me? Just fix my please. I can. I can charge you. You can charge me. Yeah. What kind of is that? All he had to do was calmly explain the situation at hand, but it seems that he wouldn't be satisfied until he's caused as much drama as possible. I hate this place. Do you? I swear I do. Okay. Come back when you like us. I was gonna help you, but your mouth just kept talking. Oh, come on, and now come you gotta on, get walking. When it seemed he'd finally managed to see reason, this guy just decided that he wanted to go ahead and do this. A little short ass. It was not like that. Screws missing it. You know what? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Come no, on, come not. on. Here, take it. 
Go somewhere else. Let me get your money back. Ashley made it clear that she wasn't joking, and if he refuses to leave, then he can be assured physical force would be used. You my money first. Leave. It's unbelievable that I have to trust Joel to have my back. Yeah. Oh. You get out of here. The Golds have always been at each other's throats, looking for one way or another to undermine each other. Now, in this episode, Ashley, who has always been very serious when it comes to business, decided to take a whole new approach with this customer. So I'll make you a deal. If it lands on red, I give you 30. Okay. If it lands on black, five. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> I made a bet with you, and I will go through with it. Uh... With the deal almost closed, it was annoying to see Seth come over just to heckle at Ashley for no reason whatsoever. What are we doing? I just bought this. How much are we paying for? 30. You make bets on a lot of things, and I do Not too. Not on pieces of like that. You're just buying junk. It's trash. You don't know what you just said, really? sir. No, you aren't. Good, sir. What Seth did was bullying at its finest, and it's sad to see that he thinks he's doing the right thing when all that he's done is disrespect the customer and his sister. <laughs> most of the time, the employees at American Jewelry and Loan have to deal with some of the most ill-tempered customers ever, and this lady is definitely one of them. No. I'll do that after. After, you after my, what? When you find my ring, I gave you a three carat. Okay, wait, 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 wait. You're not gonna storm through my store and then come up to me and start screaming. Despite Ashley's attempt to handle the whole thing as civilly as possible, the lady rebuffed all of her attempts. I'm not here to follow your rules. You're in my store. You know, well, you do? have my merchandise and I want it back. Do you have a pawn ticket? I lost the ticket, but you can look me up in your system if you want. New York, we don't behave like this. I get my merchandise. Okay, back. well, in Michigan, we act like humans. Since she can't outright tell her to just leave if she's a customer with an item there, Ashley has no other option than to comply and ask for a mode of identification with which they can check for her item in the system. Here, take a look at it. Okay. So now you have my license. Get me my ring. Hey! Oh, my ring. Hey, I can call. free longer than you. Yeah. This is total bull. Don't give me that look from the side of your eye. I know that look. Don't tell me what to do. Ah, uh, don't tell uh, me what to don't do. Don't tell either. me what to do. That was a nice one from Rich. Ashley was exasperated, and she definitely couldn't wait to be done with this woman. And when they checked for the woman's item, the result they got almost had Ashley doing a jig. You can take your license and take it where the sun don't shine. Because I don't have your ring. You know, if you want to get in a screaming match with me, then take the walk all the way back to New York. So you need to go back to New York and practice your yelling and then come back to Detroit and see if you can still keep up with me. Then we have this lady who had the oddest story to tell. Apparently, her boyfriend had decided to relieve her of her items just so that he can put them in pawn. And rather than run to the police, she felt it best to just come to the store instead. What up? I need to get my stuff, my two TVs. I need your ID or the ticket. Uh, my what? ID or your ticket. I need my stuff, like, now. We need him or the tickets. Or... What you need him for? He ain't even nowhere around. With how lacking she's proven to be in the intellectual department, it's pretty clear to see why her boyfriend, who should be her ex at this point, thought it'd be a great idea to steal her TV. You have to make a police report. I need my stuff, a police report. So did you make a police report? Can I do it back here? I'm not the police. Look, I just want my lady is showing just how crazy she can get, and Ashley was willing to match that energy bit for bit, if that's what it takes to get her out of the store. You don't pound on my window! What the with the you can't! Can. Yes, I can! No, you can't! Can. Pound on my window! I what the really? I really? you gonna pound on you? Pound on you, maybe? Good, the door's right there. Have a good day. Because you got a big dog, you think you hard? Well, the big dog she said she wasn't scared of managed to push her scrawny frame out of the door without breaking a sweat. Okay. Oh, please. No, 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 no. We've seen Seth disturb Ashley's deal. Well, in this episode, the roles were reversed and the result was awful. Are you from Detroit? No, sir. No, so it really does, doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. Not, not, not to me, not to me. And I'm trying to fund a trip down to Puerto Rico. Oh, there you go. Since his memorabilia is signed by the local team, it's a jackpot, and Seth is quite sure this item's going to sell. 
but he can only make a profit off of it if he can get it for a reasonable price. How much are you looking for? I'm looking to get 1500 for it. 1500 Looking to have a good time down south. How'd you get it? Uh, my grandfather left it to me in his will. OK. What do you know about baseballs? A lot. Oh, yeah? Normally, each of the gold siblings has a certain niche that they're in charge of at the store. And for Ashley, sports definitely isn't it at all. Um, how about 250 $250? No way. No way. That wouldn't get me to Georgia. Do you know anything about no. this ball, Ash? Can't before do. you put out any offers? It's not worth the 1500 he wanted. Can I have my ball back? Do you want to give him his ball back? Or do you want to act like a I total don't know. I want to spit out another price to really insult him. From what's going on here, it's fairly obvious that Ashley interrupted the deal just to pick a fight. Nothing more, nothing less. You have so many balls over there you can't even sell. Yeah, but Listen, you're you're balls, balls, I'm going to take my ball back. Do you know how many balls you have over there? Really? I'll take my business elsewhere, and you two can finish this up on your own time. You're wasting mine. I thought you were professionals and tactful. Evidently, I was you mistaken. Don't know. The customer who claimed he'd been standing in line waiting for what he claimed to be more than an hour or more seemed a bit vexed by the awful reception and felt the need to be as vocal about it as he possibly could. 11 windows. You got two, two working. How you doing? I'm finally here, you know what I mean? I've been in the land for like two hours, though, you know? OK, well, we got it for All right, you, right? When is, I'm done with it. Let me just get my money. He pawned a game system. He said, we can give him $110 for it. You know, here's your ticket, just sign it. The deal was essentially over, and all he had to do was sign the ticket. But the man just managed to find something else to yell about. A lot quicker well, if you Hold on, what is, this? what is this? What is what? This ain't what he told me he was going to give me. What did he tell you he was going to give you? 400 hours. 400? Yeah. This was a threat, and since this guy had deigned to say something that awful, Ashley's demeanor when talking to him changed immediately. I told you once I don't want to talk to you. Don't I would rather talk to you this late. I would rather talk Correct. to you this late. Hold on, what you mean? You don't tell me. Okay, with tell I got more women on the street out here hustling, doing things for me every night, every day. Come on, Y'all talking man. pimp D, man. He claims he's a pimp with pride, too, but that isn't exactly a praiseworthy title to have in today's day and age. Have my lawyer come up in here. I'm sending my lawyer up in here to take care of this. How y'all gonna put me up out this mother, man? You feel what I'm saying? I know you're just doing your job, big dog, but I drive my with BMW, man. Again, Ashley has to deal with another elder customer who can't seem to understand the fact that it's only right that a person returns greetings when starting a conversation. How are you? I don't know. I'm about to see. Okay. So you want to pay off your interest today? Yeah. This lady came up to take out her jewelry. How much? Fifty dollars and sixty cents. What the f that come from? From the way this woman been carrying herself throughout the entire transaction, it's pretty obvious that she'll be too tough to handle. You can sit here and I can explain to you how I got to that amount. Do you know what? You explain so much that you don't even make no motherfucking sense. I'm you not don't think you like getting riled up and screaming spooks me out? There's no way anyone would understand everything she's been saying without rapid it's being. I don't know what language that is. The kind that you don't even know about. That's oh, that's language. a good one. Did yeah. you want it? Plus, you can ask in the MS. Did you? What, I, I'm doing what? It's called Yiddish. You have two options. OK. You can pay off your interest. Actually, you have three. You can pay off your First interest. First it was one. First it was two. Having run out of patience with this lady and her mean temper, Ashley couldn't hold it in and eventually caved enough to roar at her angrily. Want to listen? Hell to the no. OK. Then go pay $50.60 and come back when Where you want to. Where is your boss at? I'm the boss. Now what? <laughs> This crazy lady came into the store barking out orders without having the proper documents with her. The reason behind this is pretty comical. All right. Yes, um, my boyfriend found my TV, um, and I need it back. I don't got no slip or nothing, but I need my TV. You have to wait in line. I ain't waiting in line. I can't help you without the ticket, and if it's not in your... Y'all gonna do something in this mother... Because I need my... TV from out of here. Ashley immediately stepped in to have a chat with this vexed woman who was causing a scene in her store. Miss, is there an issue while you're pounding yeah. on the window? Yeah. Okay, what's going on? I woke up this morning and my TV was down. How do you know it's here? Because my boyfriend told me it was here. Look okay. up my TV, lady. No, I will not. Don't, uh -uh, don't do that to me. Or what's going to happen? Look, bring your ass out here and talk to me. Now, since they made it clear she wouldn't be getting anything unless she can go through the proper channels, aka the cops, the lady went off the rails completely. This looks like my TV right here. I need my TV. Hello? Can I get my TV? Hey, hey, hey. All right. Ashley was still nice enough to even give her an option, even when she didn't deserve that at all. You have two options. You can leave. I don't have no option. I ain't going nowhere yes, without do. my TV. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. I said I ain't going nowhere without my TV. I ain't going nowhere. Bye. <laughs>
Watch out, big ass awesome me. Well, they managed to get her out of the store without her kicking up a fuss, or so they thought. Turns out she had another nefarious plan in mind. Oh, y'all don't want to give me my I'm taking this I'm gonna take your She was losing it. There's an apparent rage in the room between the Gold family members, but no one dares say a thing about it yet. None of the grown kids can reconcile their differences until Les takes it up. Thank you. What I'm thinking is that you should lay off your brother a little bit. So, Dad sent me out here to work with you, and since you're in such a crappy mood, I got this one. Buying a toilet seat's not worth an investment for the shop, but Ashley would not take a pass at pissing her brother off more than he is right now. Yep, should be fun. We replaced the toilet in her house with one that's a low flow to save on the water bill, and we were looking at it and realized it's an original 1955 Elger. I think you're still astronomical. Keep going. Why is my sister even negotiating? This isn't American jewelry and toilet. So, do you want it for $10? I know this is a crappy old toilet. Paying $10 to get under my brother's skin is all worth it. Seth raged at his sister's decision and took it personally. Ashley wants to get under his skin. She might have crawled a little too far under, and Seth is ready to pop the boil to let the itch go once and for all. Bobby J, bring it this way. What is he doing? I have no idea, but it can't be good. Seth! Seth! Ah! Seth where are you going? The tension between the father and daughter duo was out of emotions. Ashley never forgets to get back for crimes committed against her and in the most dramatic way possible. Did you ever do a transaction here before? It was, on, it was on the bar. Got it. You're good. A curious customer stumbles upon the curious cat figurine in the taxidermy section and he gets struck by it. He certainly wants it, and he's a pleasant negotiator. The only weird item in this conversation is Les's presence beside Ashley. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. How can I help you today? Oh, I'm really interested in this bobcat right here. I'll just stand here on the sideline and... I'm really good. You are really good. Okay, so what why kind don't of bird you leave? is it? You want to meet me right there where it says layaway? So you close on the deal, so you don't need any help? Uh, help you load in your car? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You don't That'd need be great. any help for a taxi for me? You sure? I asked you to leave. Both men had a share of Ashley's raging drama afterward, which brings the question, is it that time of the month or what? And here I thought Shark Week was only on Discovery, not the History Channel. Yeah. What was that about? But does your sister know much about taxidermy items? She doesn't. I'm just much trying to help her out. I understand, but now you know she's going to get pissed off. Seth's solution to this drama is like killing a bunch of birds with one stone. He plans to use this fight to avoid work, avoid the said fight, and watch both teams get at it like dogs. Or old people in a retirement home in Pensacola, Florida. Every time you guys make a sale, bring me the receipt. I'll tally them up. Winner gets bragging rights. Loser? has to work the hard gigs counter for the last hour of the he day. He doesn't even know how to turn on a computer. I won't need to learn how to use a computer, because I'm going to beat you no matter what. Don't right. count your chickens so before they're hatched. Speaking about chickens, that was a pigeon. Ashley won't take any more jokes from Seth, which cost the shop an excellent potential artifact deal. Seth jokes about Ashley by comparing her face to the carvings on one of the artifact items, which is typical for the siblings. But Ashley decides to be more dramatic about it than usual. Uh, this is a tomahawk right here. This is the war club. And then this is actually, they're all pewter belt buckles. Do you collect um, this kind of stuff? I'm Native American myself. I'm okay. Cherokee. So I have quite a collection of Native American. It's almost doesn't it? It's closer to you. <laughs> it is, right? It's the same color hair. Ashley was having no fun with the guy jokes between Seth and the customer and forfeited the deal. Seth doesn't want to be unprofessional, so he succumbs to the drama queen's bid of the hour. 90 bucks? No, actually, I'm not interested. He was rude, Seth. He was just joking. He was not joking. My sister takes things way too personally. He was rude. Whatever. This woman came out of her car screaming. Now she planned to scare an employee and make him do what she wanted, but Les trained his employees well. Procedure first, actions later. 
Little did she know Ashley was watching from behind the counter and she was about to get served a steaming hot cup of justice. Excuse me. Hello. Hi. Yes, um, my boyfriend found my TV um, and I need it back. I don't got no slip or nothing, but I need my TV. Okay, so he stole it from you. Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do is go make a police report. No, I need my TV from here right now. So what you can do, since it's uh -uh. not legal for us to look up no. somebody else's where the TV's at? I think this is my TV over here. Excuse me. This looks like my TV right here. First, you don't look like you own a TV that large. Second, don't ever go beyond what you can't handle. And before you do something stupid, Hurricane Ashley's gonna have Big Joe send you out of the premises at no cost to you. There's no service like Joe service. Can you get this? Cause this man. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. So if you wanna buy that one. No, back, I don't wanna buy it. I want my mother TV off this bitch. Get your big ass off I me. suggest you leave. I do what I want to do. Bye. Get your big ass off me. Have a good day. Whatever, bitch. The madness didn't end indoors. It extended significantly outside the shop as well. The customer made a foolish decision. This for that, a cone for a TV. She tried, but I bet she could never outdo Ashley when it comes to drama. I'm taking this. <laughs> I'm going to take your. She was losing it. You need to put yourself together because you're acting like a crazy girl. Bye. The new system at the pawn shop is annoying enough to Ashley, and an impatient customer misbehaves till he crosses Ashley's reserved nerves, aka the last of her patients. The appliance section gets the most customers, and the jewelry section attracts a few who can afford one. This long queue keeps this customer on his toes. Dumbest system ever. Thanks. Ma'am, I don't have the time to wait in that line. That line is way too long. I realize that. I'm really sorry. No, no, this is bull. You see that big old line? How about you go wait in that line? Seriously? Yes. That is a long line. Ashley's not in the mood to keep explaining herself to this customer. Only dramatic action can put him in his place. So she walked over and kicked him and his TV out of the store for good. And take my TV and give me some money for it. It's bull Success process is making everything slower at the front, and it's starting to make me insane. You guys see this? Everybody see this bull What? TV. I just wanted to get some money for my TV. That's all I want. Damn it. Here you go. Give me the TV. This particularly old customer came prepared for a takeaway of her jewelry or a fight with her rude responses, only to go deaf when shown her accumulated bill. Now she's shocked that she has to pay up to $50 in interest and decides to confuse Ashley with gibberish disguised as an Ethiopian language. Still, Ashley is more dramatic than her Ethiopian wisdom. Tell me how much the f I owe. Okay, you owe $50.60. How much? $50.60. Okay, well, let's catch up again. Spooked out job. You got spooked out job. What can I say? A what? You got a spooked out job. Ashley remained calm, though tired of this customer's attitude. The customer kept cutting Ashley's speech short until it was, yo, I want to talk to your manager, B. But then all of a sudden it was, yo, I am your manager, B. So she got the shock of her life and she had no choice but to walk away. I don't know Ethiopian, so you're talking to me in English. Let's just finish this transaction in English. Here's what we do. What you do? Okay. Who else can help me? Nobody. Damn. Gift card starts World War Three. A lady enters the store looking for a watch, but forgets to watch her mouth. And we all know what happens when customers prove too special with the golds. Do you want a leather band, a metal band? Let me see this right here. This will be good. Okay. This one. This is really pretty. No. What is this? It's a $100 gift card. $100 gift card? $100 gift card. These are not our gift cards. What would you call it? It's These are for customer. Right. How dare you, Ashley? With a look on the lady's face, things were about to get hot and not in a good way. Turn around and swipe it, okay? There's no swiper on this. So you're telling me I'm losing $100? What is she going to say? What y'all don't understand up in here? Okay, okay. You, what is she going to say? I'm not about to lose, all right? I'm going to get my money. Hey, Byron, show her where the money's at. I'm going to get my money. He's going to show you where the money's at. Okay, we'll walk up. I need my money. The scamming attempt goes south. Les Gold has been in the business long enough to spot attempted shakedowns. 
and when an amateur tries it, he learns why Les is the king of pawns. You're the owner. How are you doing? I'm Mark I Hollingsworth. I am the owner. I'm yes, sorry? Mark Hollingsworth. Mark Hollingsworth. Yeah, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Where are you from, Mark? Clearwater, Florida, but I have family up here in Northville, and we're starting a uh, towing company. Let's say you have a car that's left overnight by some chance. It doesn't okay. happen. Well, things happen. We don't have that problem because we have fences around the building. Well, we've done a couple other business around here. I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. Seriously, what's up with this dude? What part of I'm not interested doesn't he understand? Not to worry, Les is more than happy to explain it to him outside. You are not coming into my business and trying to shake me down. Do you understand me? Hey, listen, you are Do not you underst understand no, me? Not Will way. you please escort this gentleman out of here? I'm not meeting anywhere right there. Yeah, of course you're not. Okay. I'll be back in this. All right, come on back. An impromptu concert receives no applause. Have you ever watched a musical where you can burst into songs anywhere? The porn store is not one of those places, and this wannabe pianist learns that the tough way. Moons, you did great. Excuse me, sir, did no, you no, want to no, buy no, the no, piano? No. Okay, we, it, the talk. sign says please do not touch, so we talk, appreciate bro. if you don't touch it. Sound like it's out of key. Sound good? It's off key, man, we are. Moons, you did great in this thing, everybody pay attention. Oh, oh, oh. When the duo is kicked out, they throw a tantrum and their crutches. Watch the fingers. Oh, 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 watch the fingers. Watch the fingers. Have a good day. Oh, oh, Broke tone, let's go. Have a nice day. Buy the piano first. Next time, y'all will You all right, sir? Man fails to sell Seth virtual items. Seth might be receptive to trading NFTs, but definitely not virtual wristwatches his dad has to pay for. But this customer fails to understand. This one knows if you give me a price for that boy. Right. What is that made out of? It's original. I don't know what the what the make of it is. Right. Look at the detail on that boy though. I don't know exactly what you're gonna be bringing in. I don't know if it's metal. I don't know if it's paper. I don't know if it's just a painting. I don't know without seeing it. Right. Two options are available to the customer: bring in the merchandise or leave the store in style. And it seems he's leaning towards the second. You mean I'm not you wasting your time? You don't have it right time? here. It was I right there. Right I'd be here. looking at a clock. You know what? What? Fuck you. Have Come a nice on, day. Have a nice get day. out of here. Let me get this. Say hello to the bad guy. There you go. Hello, bad guy. Let's go. The customer tries to shoot an adult movie in the store. The Golds are used to having all kinds of customers, but this one surprises them and us. What is he doing to that table? Let's see. This is a sex table? This is for For what? Damn, I'll get some on this mother boy. Not only is he a perv, but he's also rude. Not a great combination, except you want your backside thrown out of the store. It's over here. I want Ashley, man. That's my girl. Yeah, I want Ashley, man. That's my bitch. That's who I've been screaming for. Come here. Daddy Gold isn't happy, and that's understandable. Coming into his store, defacing his merchandise, and talking garbage to his daughter would make even the gentlest of souls angry. And Les is far from that. Really? You don't think so? You don't think so? Here's the way I'm gonna roll away. You don't disrespect my daughter in my jacket. What's going on out there? Do not go out there. I'd strangle that mother and you would too. A customer chooses to be a prima donna at the worst time possible. Things are a bit heated in the store due to a recent theft, and when a customer acts funny, he gets more than he bargained for. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. Oh, I was, like, hoping. How much are you looking for? Is this enough to pay rent? How much is your rent? 300 Okay. Oh, bummer. The jewelry is as fake as his story. But Ashley does her best to be helpful, at least until the guy starts throwing the f bombs. It's not real gold. So you saying it? Basically, y'all sit up here and waste my time talking to you. You don't waste your time. If you have a TV, you can pawn your TV. Lower your voice. This guy's acting really erratic, and it's making me really nervous. Lower your voice. Don't tell me what to do. Don't put your finger in my face. After that, Byron deserves a raise. And Les deserves the Father of the Year award. No, she ain't by herself, my man. She ain't by herself, my man. No, I call down, my man. Let's go. No, you got me up. No, let's go. Let me go. Let me go. Seth rejects vintage computers from angry customers. 
These men want an arm and a leg for computers that would take forever to load, and Seth has a disappointing answer for them. We need some money. We're going to out west. We killed all the deer in Michigan, so we got to go out for lie. bigger and better stuff. So how much are you looking for? About $900. Um, what I can offer you is zero. 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 Why so angry? He does realize Seth is allowed to say no, right? Most people don't get that aggravated when they bring in, like, ancient artifacts. Yeah, they people collect these things. Oh, they're antiques now. You don't have to be a smart ass I'm not trying to be a smart ass. You and you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You do. You know, I couldn't give him anything for these computers, but it's good to know ZZ Top is still in Detroit. Why'd he let it fall? Now they'd be worth zero dollars in an antique store. And did you see the Avenger that comes to Les's rescue? Les sure won't be returning the favor if she gets her butt kicked. Oh, man! Man, why you break that man? I did not drop it on accident, man. I didn't break it. I thought it was you, man. Oh, that's good. The woman turns the pawn shop to City Hall, but Ashley proves to be an impartial judge. If you ain't got a couple thousand dollars to get me to get back home, get out my damn face. Where is your husband? Okay. My husband right now. Because I'm about to go to his bank account and withdraw that out of there and put that in the gas tank and close his account. Okay. My truck is sitting in the middle of Greenfield. Hold up. Doesn't she look like she needs a listening ear? Ashley must have misread the situation, but is back to being the not-so-nice businesswoman. All right, so we're going to do 180 for you. What you say? I know I can get a whole bunch of thousands for that because I paid a whole lot of thousands for that. Your business can get shut up. I like it. Take your money. I'm going to your husband, get your check, and he is too. I, I urge all the women out there to hide their husbands because this lady is on a rampage. It's not a party of heated moments unless the gold siblings have a scenario of their own. This time, Seth decides to show Ashley who the boss is. He wrote to me. Things started to heat up from here, but Les was watchful for when the actual color of the customer would become vivid to the eyes and not the mind of the onlooker. It pays to be patient. Why can't I get some for it, then? Because we don't take crystal. I'll take your rings. Your rings ain't for sale today. I don't want to buy it. I take it in pawn. It's an antique. Les's resolve has the customer at a standstill, arm at an akimbo, staring Les in the eyes. But the man is tough as a metallic tennis bat, and security is tight as the nut of an oak tree, to the customer's surprise. I heard you from the beginning. So let's work something out, man. No, I can't take it. I'm sorry. Well, I think you need to work something out with me, man. Like a cornered beast, only this time does he realize that he's not turning back and gaining advantage of the situation. The customer is taking rage by the horns, hoping to turn the situation around. He's not getting anywhere. He's only embarrassing himself. Me and you. No deal. Deal. No deal. Deal. How much you gonna give me for? I'm gonna start running away out the door. Hey, hold on, man. Oh, hold on, hold on, brother. When an illusion does not result in reality, people blame the other party to relieve the stress of thinking about their lives. Fake ass Drew Stokes. You. You could have gave me something. Give me the ring. I'll take the ring in pawn. Whose fault is that? The guy should have done his research to know which model could work for the strongest man in the world's training before making the purchase. This thing obviously couldn't handle what I was doing on it, so. Despite the fault not being his, Les is ready to help, but the customer's lack of evidence makes it difficult to assist him. Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. I didn't think I needed to keep it. There's nothing I can do for you without a receipt. If you had the receipt, I could give you an exchange, I could give you some. I don't want an exchange because it's probably going to be some again. Why do unreasonable customers think that they're the only ones who know how to cuss? Les has no swear jars in the store and can cuss all day long if he wants to. I need my mother money back. I, I understand that, and I'd like to give your mother you're money gonna back. going to give me my money back. I'm not going to do yes, anything. I'm not going to do you, anything. And you can back off, too. Who would win in a fight between Joe and the irate customer. Joe has the height, but the customer has the muscle. You give me the receipt, I'll be more than happy like to Like I said, I don't have the receipt. And I don't have the money. Guess we know now, Les knew what he was looking out for when he hired his security guys, and today, it shows they're all worth their weight in gold. Man, man. The oh, God. Come on, come on, let's come on, let's come on, let's go. Really? Let's go. Hey, hey, let's go. I told you, man, let's go. You want to fight with me? Come, come on, on outside. We come got on. you, Les gives pretty good advice. If Joe had ducked instead of restraining him, he would have fallen and had to be wheeled out of the store. 
Bring a few more. There's your machine, buddy. Don't come in here threatening us. We don't go for that. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. This woman came out of the car screaming. She plans to scare an employee and make them do what she asks, but let's train his employees well. Procedure first, actions later. He took my TV. I woke up this morning and it was gone, and I need it back. You sure it's here? Yeah, he told me it was here. This customer does not know what hurricane is coming for her. Hurricane Ashley got her attention to the customer service point, and no good comes from making threats in Ashley's presence. What you can do, since it's uh -uh. not legal for us to look up no. somebody else's look name. Look up my TV, lady. No, I will not. Don't, uh -uh, don't do that to me. Standing behind the counter is Hurricane Ashley, and behind the customer is Big Joe, whose job is to sweep you off your feet at the request of Hurricane Ashley. Little girl. Yes, big girl. Yeah, I'll be all that. Get your ass out here and get my TV. Hello? Can I get my TV? Hey, 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 excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I want my TV out this bitch. First, you do not look like you want a TV that big. Second, don't ever go beyond what you can handle. And before you do something stupid, Hurricane Ashley is going to have Big Joe send you out of the premises. I want my TV. Okay, you have two options. You can leave. I don't have no option. I ain't going nowhere yes, without my TV. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. I still ain't going nowhere without my TV. I ain't going nowhere. Bye. The madness does not end indoors. It extends significantly outside the premises. The customer made a foolish decision. This for that, a cone for a TV. The good thing is, Big Joe doesn't have the time for her drama. I'm taking this. <laughs> I'm gonna take your. A young man walks up to the counter. He wants to pawn an air gun and set to standing by. He looks harmless and may be in dire need of the money. I got a framing gun here. I'm trying to pawn on. A quick test run, but the gun is unexpectedly faulty. The young man's covert glance during the gun test cages a sinister attention. Air's leaking straight out of here, so you really won't be able to take it like that. Nah, what, what you do with it, dude? Because I just was using that gun. Seth senses the drama about to unfold. He steps in like the man of the place, which he is. Even Les could feel the aura around that part of the store dampened. And in about a minute, the scenario flipped over from smooth to a dry burnt pancake. Making air. You, you the manager? Yeah, I'm a manager. Look, man, I just brought this gun up here, man. He talking about it don't work. I just was using his gun, dog. What were you nailing? I just listen, brought dog. this gun up here. Yeah, listen, work? It doesn't work. Here, listen. Because listen, it doesn't listen, work. Dog, what the f are you yelling at, dog? The young man here had to insert lies to prove his credibility. But one lie is never enough to cover one's back. You need a thousand more to cover for the first. He didn't even know what an air compressor was. There was no way that this guy just got done using it because it didn't work. And I'm not yelling at you. What the f your problem, dude? Sir, Why is you in my mother face? What you walking up on me for, dog? The f man? Like many others before him, Young Thug Jr. gets evicted for his good. Hey, dog. Hey, dog, don't touch me, man. I'll walk up out here. Oh, now, this is real nice right here. I think I could look good when I go out with this. That one's sharp. How much is this one right here? $5.99. Oh, no. Oh, no. Me. When it was time to pay up, the book started to reveal itself. Bugatti has become a motivational speaker and tries to convince Ashley that a $2 bill is worth the watch and some change. Without a gun, that's impossible. Okay, this is $599 plus tax. Hold on, wait a minute. This is worth, look, look at it, two and add three more zeros with it. 2000 baby. Only Bugatti knows where he got his charms from, but they do not cast a spell on Ashley, who's confused by the drama of this man over a $2 bill. It's worth $2,000. It's rare to find a $2 bill that got red in it. Now tell me it ain't worth $2,000. I'm about to go down. Bugatti might have had a chance of playing his tricks for a little while longer if he had not passed his limit to insult Ashley. She's never taken it lightly with anyone who offended her. You know what? Okay. I'm going to tell you something. Okay. You owe bologna sandwich. Y'all ain't got no money. Okay. You know what I'm have a good day. Please have Big a good mouth. Big mouth. Is Getting thrown out of the store does not stop Bugatti. And as he walks out of the store, he makes it known that he would buy the store with his $2 bill. Well, we'll just wait here for when that finally happens. Hilarious. Real funny, man. Y'all be killing me. I'll pawn you. Matter of fact, that $2 bill, you could. I'll the man attempts to pawn stolen items at the store but gets caught. Bobby knows how to identify guilty customers. When this man walks into the store, he's got guilt written all over him. Hey, what's up, bud? I'm looking to pawn these uh, microphones I picked up from a uh, concert last night. Uh. If you're going to lie, at least cover up with something original. 
Those microphones aren't light and can cause serious injury to anyone in the audience of thrones. So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and put it nicely inside of this thing? No, I got Zip them. it up and then threw it out there. You didn't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out what must have happened at the concert. And two calls later, Bobby has the confirmation he needs that their guest is a thief. And I picked him up. Really? Really? Hold on. Are you missing some? Exactly. I've got them. Bargaining with the guy after discovering the truth is pure genius and keeps him from running. With his nervous energy, you could tell he would take even $20 to get out of the area. 100 bucks a piece, if possible. How about 75 a piece? That works. He must have taken the microphones as compensation for his missing items, but had no idea that he wasn't allowed. At least that's a story I'd tell if I were in his shoes. Ain't got my idea. I lost it with my wallet at the show. The plot thickens. It seems our con man did not act alone. The events turn edgy because nothing is as dangerous as teenagers with lots of free time and nothing to lose. Who the f are these kids now? Are these his friends? You know what? We could have a problem on our hands. Make sure security's at the front door. It turns out the likes weren't complimentary gifts for coming to the concert. The manager's story paints a more accurate picture of what happened at the concert. Last night, somebody slid in under a cage that we had left. and um, lifted two of these mics. That's it. The whole squad isn't going anywhere until the police come. After the investigation, it's possible that the seller is not the actual thief, but rather the gullible sacrifice for the team. Cops are coming. Well, they can wait. Well, I think. Why we got to stay? We all got to stay. Why? I'm not the person that came We're all involved in the group. That's the way it works. Until we know what's going on, that's the way it's going to be. Seth and Rich got themselves a flirty visitor in the form of a customer, dolled up and sucking on a pacifier. I'm Seth. Oh, you're cute. <laughs> um. The way the lady sucked on her pacifier might be sexy to them, but a turnoff for Seth. Mm. Seth does not want to hear any more of whatever flirt baby has to offer. He will gladly talk business to let her off. You can tell the baby knows what she's doing. Can I help you? I'm just making, you know, my TV and my ring. Trying to at least walk out with 800. Bobby has nice items for sale, but it won't stop flirting with Seth, who's not buying her act whatsoever. Rich is amused by the whole drama. <laughs> Are you married? I'm good. That mean you're married? Seth is impressed by the jewelry and TV set the baby brought in, but for the upteenth time, he's not having fun with her flirting and the signal that she's sending to him. Her ring was pretty nice. It has diamonds. It's 10 karat gold. Her TV was relatively nice, but does she think that flirting with me is going to get her some bonus points? Seth had to shun her questioning attitude and keep up with business. We know Seth to be strict and straightforward with his customers. So, you need a loan or you want to sell it? Loan. Loan. Since Baby's not getting the necessary attitude and attention from Seth, she turns to Rich, who had fixated his gaze on Baby's action with his mouth partly opened. Want to taste my ring? No. no. In that singular moment, Rich got the awakening from whatever had him hooked, and staring at Baby altered the time she was there. You want to taste it, Rich? I'm good. Rich, you just offered it. I'm doing it. Right? Hey, listen, I, would, I wouldn't move in on your action. No. I will pay you $50. Seth is happy at the thought of having Baby's pacifier offered to Rich. And what is all the work without fun? To make some heat out of the air, he finds spray. Rick, <laughs> would you suck on my pacifier for 20 bucks? Mm. Pegged at $20 in cash from the original 50 offered to Rich earlier, Rick is taken by this offer from Seth. $20 cash. <laughs> the other staff are now having a good time with the unexpected turn of events. Baby's down to have Rick take a lick. Rick's action shows that he needs the money. Okay, I know you want to. No. But let me tell you. There's always Seth has been on getting that pacifier in someone's mouth, and so he upped the offer. Rich is aiding Seth, but the security guy is not in league with the act. I think you're into it. I take good. After a lot of consideration, Rick took the offer. Yikes. Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Is you ready? From baby's mouth straight into Rick's mouth. Five seconds and the prize is won. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Without wasting more time, though, Seth gets back to business, not letting the little play of the day cost the shop some money. And he got his deal in the end for both parties left with a happy face. 300 bucks, you can come back anytime and pick it up. Sure. You want to do it? Great. Thanks. Thanks. The conversation starts normally enough. You might even call it pleasant. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? The intent behind the customer's visit to the shop is adorable, but the valuation of her gadget is high.